Matt mentioned that you guys will self scout tomorrow and get take some time off. Will you take time off, or does a coach just coach? I, I've always, it, it, we're always thinking about it. We'll watch football uh, for fun, which is always fun to be a fan and just kind of sit there and uh, enjoy it with the family. Uh, tomorrow we'll definitely do a really good job looking at the self scout, trying to just kind of evaluate everything we've done up to this point. But uh, you know, my father, I, he always taught me when you have a chance to unwind, you need to unwind. When you get home, you got to leave leave football at home. So it'll be a good time to catch up with the family, get to see my son play some basketball and my daughter play basketball. So I'm I'm really excited about it. You know, EJ was talking yesterday about you know. 20 for 69 or whatever it was, but no real explosive runs, but there's such a value and there's more reward for him converting a third and two than there is a 20 yarder. Uh, and, and, and that kind of paid dividends in a different kind of way for your offense yesterday. I mean, the way he ran the ball yesterday, a lot of people would say uh, there wasn't a lot of yards, but I mean, he was on a mission. I mean, there's one play that I think he, he only gained like about a yard or two, and he, he gets up and he is just pumped up. Because, I mean, what he did, for, the amount of yards that he had after contact, I mean, he was dragging people, running people over. I mean, it, it was awesome. And it's about a mentality. You know, you still have to run the ball even if you're not getting those explosives. We're obviously always searching for those. But just to set the standard, set the mentality that we're going to come and we're going to bring it every single play, I think is important. And I think that A.J. is the epitome of that. I mean, he and Aaron. Aaron, I mean, he was having some hard runs, too. And... Um, it still sets things up. You still have to defend it. So I think that we stayed committed to it, which I thought was really great. And we were able to get some big, I mean, a couple times, I think he dragged some people for about five, six yards for some of those seven yarders at the end there. Um, and then obviously those short yardage, short yardage is so critical and so difficult. Yeah, I know it's just a yard, but getting that one yard when they know you're probably handing the ball off is, is, is a difficult thing to do. And AJ, I mean, he had one when he lowered his pads, and there was nobody that was going to not deny him, and it was awesome. I mean, I think it was like the first one. I think it might have uh, might have been the fourth down call or something like that. That he he did a great job. Just want to see Aaron get reps, just to see how that knee would fare. No, I I mean he was ready to go. I mean, it was one of those things we were we were, we didn't know what was going to happen. It was a game time deal, and uh, you know if you ever have him available, you you want to get going. And um, those both both those guys went in there and did a fine job. It's great. I mean, both those guys, I mean, at any time they could pop one. I think that's that's the most exciting thing about it. Um, but both of those guys are such efficient runners. When it's not clean, I, Coach Stenovich always, always laughs because, you know, something might not happen very good up front, but the running backs can make you right. And I think those are two guys that as you hand them the ball, even if it's not perfect, even if it's not pretty, they're going to find a yard. They're going to find two yards. They're going to drag somebody. They're going to make somebody miss. Uh, so to have both those guys is just incredible. Daniel, if, if you guys got to take this approach with Aaron the rest of the year with practice being limited, um, what have you learned about doing it the last couple of weeks that will help you? He's really good. <laughs> He's really good. And uh, uh, I mean, the, the fact that the guy hasn't practiced for as long as he had, and it's been something that we've been talking about a lot. And um, it, if it was anybody else, you would be concerned. But I mean, his preparation, uh, how he is with the team, how he is around the team. I mean, just being out of practice, calling in the plays for the guys, messing with the guys, just his presence out there is as important as anything. I mean, he's a leader of our team. And to see him out there and not even skip a beat once he gets on the field, I mean, it's just a credit to his toughness. I mean, we talked about that last week. I mean, what he's going through just to be able to get out on that field is awesome. And, you know, we just have to keep going with our same routine. Um, continually uh, just develop the good plan for him, make sure he sees it and is excited about it because it's a lot more visualization now. So be, if you can't get those reps, if you can't face the defense, it's about him being able to see it when we practice it on the tape. So it's just a little bit more visual, but uh, he's done a nice job. Daniel, um, I think two times in a row Aaron's talked to us, he's gone out of his way to, to highlight EQ. What is he doing that is catching your guys' eye even though the numbers don't really pop out? Uh, you know, he, he, he was... He's kind of been back and forth a little bit this whole year. And, and I think that for him, it's a credit to him mentally just to be able to keep grinding and keep earning trust and keep working. And in his opportunities, he's made the best of them. He's been right where Aaron expects him to be. And I think that is so important in this game. Uh, when you run a route, if, if we say six yards, it's got to be six yards. It's not that eight or five. I mean, he goes to him on the Omaha 
on the right side and it, and it looked routine. It looked so simple. And I think those things to get on the same page is, is something difficult to do. And, you know, he's earned his trust e each day, even on the, just those little things. I think he's gone in there and blocked. I mean, what he's doing on special teams for our team. I mean, the respect that we all have for him and what he's, what he's doing is awesome. And it goes for all those guys. They're all doing a really good job. Back on Aaron for a second, what was kind of going through your mind on that third and goal keeper and, and kind of seeing him being able to, to get around the corner there on Jalen? <clears throat> yeah, uh, that play we didn't know was going to happen like that. Um, it was funny because earlier in the week, we Aaron has been continually talking about wanting to do that. So in the back of my mind, I knew there was a small possibility uh, that it might happen. And we had a couple things that he could have done also besides pulling it. Um, but I think he made a great decision because I think he committed to wanting to hand the ball off. And Aaron Donald, I believe he blasted through the middle and he just kind of made a split second reaction. And, you know, for us, we're looking where we think the ball's going to go. And then all of a sudden he's uh, outside of the pocket and he's one on one with Jalen Ramsey. And his emotions started getting a little, little high there. But uh, I thought he did a great job uh, pump faking him and, and still getting the ball in the end zone. So what did you say in the press box or in the coach's box? When I was screaming with joy of the touchdown <laughs> at, at, at that time. I was, I was very excited. And it was, it was, it was funny because he, he had been talking about it and wanted, had been wanting to do it. So I was more, I was, there was some language that came out, but I just, I, I just thought it was hilarious because, I mean, he kind of prepped us for us without actually telling us. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of teams who don't have one good left tackle. It seems like you have three. Um, is, is Josh a legit left tackle? I mean, he's done a great job. Uh, I mean, you look at when he went in the first game, I mean, it was Bosa, and he stepped up. Uh, and, and in the next game, gosh, that was so long ago, but uh, I mean, he's been going against some premier pass rushers. And the good thing about Josh is it's not, it really isn't too big for him. And, and I've been saying that a lot with the line, and I give so much credit to Coach Stenovich, Coach Buckus. Uh, that whole group is a unit because when one guy comes in, they all kind of bond together. They work together and they help each other out. And, and it makes it so that they can go out there and not skip a beat. And, um, but I mean, Yash has done such a good job. I mean, I can't give him enough credit for going out there. I mean, I think on the 10th play of the, the game, he had a pancake. And um, I mean, it, it, it's just awesome. Uh, I mean, you never know exactly what's going to happen uh, when you put guys in there that haven't had a lot of experience and are going against premier rushers and a premier defensive line because so much credit to that defense. It's, they put you in some hard positions because it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocks. And I'll tell you, Yash has really stepped it up. So, so he's doing a good job. Have you ever seen a guy who's 6'8", 300, whatever pounds, pounce on a ball that quickly? He is one of the most athletic big human beings I've ever seen in my life. There, there was one earlier when we had a home game that he actually did like a cartwheel on top of a guy. Um, somebody got whipped around and he kind of avoided and jumped up and flipped. And I had never seen somebody that big do that. Um, but yeah, he, he was pretty good. Very good at the robot too, as you guys saw. That was exciting. Nathaniel, is there one area that has been gnawing at you that you wanted to do during the self-scout that you'll pay special attention to? Definitely the gold zone. The gold zone, I, we, we set such a high standard for us. And uh, I think that we really need to look at that uh, and, and make sure we're doing the right things. Uh, see what people are doing to maybe stop us or what we're doing on how we might be hurting ourselves and uh, just make sure we got a good package going in these last five games. It's December football now. You're going to have to score in, in the gold zone. Nathaniel, given how important that is to you personally and to the offensive success, as you go into the self-scout, what is your inkling has been not quite good enough? We'll see right. I, I think running the ball first and foremost. I think when you look at how it was kind of set up from year one to year two, the first year, you know, what we did in the run game down there was unbelievable. I think, you know, Aaron Jones had all those touchdowns um, and it made people have to stop the run. And that led us to the next year when everybody was trying to stop the run in Aaron Jones and then we were able to throw the ball as many times as we did. And I think right now we have to look and, and see where we need to go from that standpoint. I think it always starts with the run down there to make them stop that, which then will open up some passes. Uh, but we, it's just about being consistent and being able to execute down there. We made a couple great adjustments this past game. We threw a play in that we didn't, uh, didn't have in originally and were able to score uh, to A.J. Dillon, which was great. Um, so I think it's just about doing what's best for us right now and definitely running the ball. What can you say about Randall Cobb? LaFleur said it was great that he was able to hold on despite getting injured on that touchdown. 
Oh, I, that play, first and foremost, is one of Matt's favorite plays of all time. So um, he was very emotional with that one, and it was specifically designed for Cobb to do it because uh, we knew he would do the best job at it. And uh, I, I mean, just his toughness and, and his grit and just the way that he's been playing all year has been just awesome to, to be a part of and watch for a guy. You know, he, he came in this year and not knowing him very well, but what Aaron had, how Aaron had always talked about him previously. That uh, it's been so much fun having him out there, and I mean, just the—I mean, he takes a check down for thirty some yards uh, when we caught the little wide, and then he has the explosive seam route, which was just beautiful uh, by both of those guys. And then to be able to make that tight window throw, take two hits, and still get hey, was, still get hurt. I don't even know if he knew he was hurt because everybody started banging him around. You could see him kind of limping on one leg. Um, but again, it just shows how tough that guy is. I mean, he's a stud, and and we're so lucky to have him. You guys went to the championship game the last two years. You're in. Obviously, really good shape this year. Where, where are you guys different? Do you think this team is real close, and we've been close the past past three years. But I think it's it's a combination of the guys being close and the guys understanding their roles and the guys being able to support each other. I mean, having two backs that are as good as they are, and I mean they're so happy for each other whenever they have success. To to watch the tight ends whenever the tight ends. I mean, when Josiah got the touchdown and the first two guys down there were TD and. Um, and uh, Daphne, I mean, it, it's, it's awesome. I, I mean, I think that's the thing that is so special about this group. Nobody flinches, nobody blinks. Everybody knows what we ask them, to, what we want them to do, what we're asking them to do, and they do it to their best ability. It's, it's, it's a true, you know, we've got some superstars and we've got some role guys, and, but everybody's together and everybody's equal. And I think that's, I mean, just, just the things, watching them in the meetings, how they talk, it's, it's just this culture that, you know, since Matt's got here, that he's built. And, and, and it sh just shows it gets stronger and stronger every single year. And I think that that's just something special. And Nathaniel, you, you've coached a really long time now. Your dad coached a really long time. I can't imagine there's a lot of offensive lines throughout history that have been without a franchise left tackle, a left guard, and the preferred starting center and still held it together. I know it hasn't been perfect. And I know it's not just one thing. So why do you think your offensive line has been able to get the job done through all this? First and foremost, I think the system that we have here is is very efficient for offensive linemen to be able to jump in and play different positions. That's one thing uh, that has really stood out is where you move and where you fit, it, everything kind of goes together. So when we're moving Billy all over the place, when we had to move Elton around, um, Lucas has moved around, and, and anybody that comes in, there's so many different techniques that, that kind of carry over through it. So I think the system's the, the first thing, but to be able to have a good system, you have to have a good coach, and I think that both Buckus and Coach Stenovich are phenomenal, and they know the system in and out, so it allows them to implement that system that we have. So I think those things together allow different guys to be able to play. And then just just the things that we've tried to do to be able to not just protect them, but uh, you know just put them in the best position for them, for what they do, I think has been able to make them successful, and, and uh, doing as much as we can to help the edges and all those things, because you know, even when you have the all pros out there, you still need to do some of those things. And um, I, I just think those guys have really come together. There's such a tight group in there. You know, Bakhtiari does a great job <laughs> bringing that group together and making them feel comfortable and, and having a fun time, but at the same time going to work. So it's just a kind of a combination of so many different things. Last one here. Nathaniel, you've, uh, you've known Alan for a really long time. How do you, can you kind of? Put your finger on what it's going to take to kind of get him going. He's the one guy that's been really good for you in the past that maybe you're not getting the same production. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think for everybody, I wish we can throw the ball more, run the ball more, have more plays. We had 82 plays this last game, and as much as you want that, you know, at the same time, you want to be sure you, you don't get that many plays because it's a long season. Um, but I think that just for everybody, it's it's when your number's called, you know, you gotta you gotta do the right thing and. Um, I think we want to try to get the ball to everybody. We really do. And I think uh, all of a sudden there will be some game he'll probably have all kinds of touches and touchdowns and all that. So um, it's about being patient, understanding that we are still trying to get, get everybody the ball and we want to spread it out, make it balanced as much as we can. Um, and when that time comes, uh, you know, I think he'll, he'll be able to come up big. Sir, are you going on Zoom? Yep, go ahead, Ryan Wood. Hey, Nathaniel, with, with Yash, how much has what he's done been surprising or surprised you? And, and as he's proven it, obviously early in the season, 
uh, and then the, this past game, has the offense changed as a reflection? Have you been more comfortable schematically with, with giving him more up on that side? I, I think from the standpoint of, of being surprised, I think I was probably more surprised the first game he went in. Um, and then the next games, he's continually played at a very uh, high level and done a, done a really good job. So I think that him coming out there, uh, it was more about him being excited. You know, he'd already had those first ones under his belt. So that was a real positive thing to get those out of the way. And now here he is uh, playing at the level he is, and which is great. And I, I mean, I don't think we've ne necessarily given him more. We're, it's just we're doing a lot of the same stuff. It's just he's more comfortable with it. And, and we're always going to try to be creative with our motions, our shifts, our trying to gain guys' angles. and. Um, it's just watching him, just even in practice, just being able to communicate with the guys. I mean, that has increased uh, so much more in his efficiency of getting calls back and forth from the tight ends to, to the line. And it's just something that's going to get better the more, more that he gets to play. So um, we're just going to keep doing what we do, and, and he'll have to keep grinding.